Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Littman. We're doing something a little different today. Rachel and Nick joined me to talk about the election in 2016 when they were in Finland and had their fantasy suite date. Going back in time a little bit to talk about that experience, plus a little prognosticating for Thursday. Just trying to keep it fun. Hope you enjoy this. Be kind to yourself. And we'll be back on Thursday with Lauren Zima to talk about the first episode of the Tasha era. Let's batch. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Welcome to Bachelor Party, an election special, which is also a two-on-one date. I'm the one in the two, Rachel Lindsay and Nick Vial. Hello, you two. Hi. Hi, Juliet. You know, Nick and I were podcasting a couple weeks ago, and I had an epiphany. I was like, I know I need some Bachelor Tuesday programming. There won't be a show. It's going to be a weird day. And I was like, you know what still fascinates me? The Bachelor 2016 experience. And so I really just wanted to dig into what it was like for you guys when you were on your weird date in Finland four years ago. I actually don't know if it was weird. I just said it was weird. It might not have been. You guys could tell me. I mean... The date or just the election or both? Both. I mean, I I know that you guys were still in production when the election happened. And so I'm very well, curious. Our dates specifically was the day, was the day after. following the election. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So November, so it was, November 9th, 2016. Yeah. I mean, it was, um, we, we were ahead, right? And yeah. so yes. I went to bed like, okay, well I'm going to wake up and Hillary's going to be president. And I woke up and I woke up. I don't know when, how it was for you. But they hadn't called it yet. Like right. clearly, like it went into the night. And by the time I woke up, they were like, I'm pretty sure Trump's <laughs> gonna win this. And I was like, What? <laughs> no way. <laughs> and I'm just in my room. And what's interesting, because Finland, for those of you who don't know, is right next to Russia. Yes, it and, is up north. <laughs> and so you got Russian programming, which I don't understand Russian, but some of it was like. <laughs> I think it was either in English or whatever, or I think there were some that was obviously in Russian and I watched it, not understanding it, but like just seeing the pictures and you could kind of get a tone for stuff. It was just super bizarre. And then when the day started, it was, you felt it with production. Yeah, you did. Really? You did. So my experience was a little bit different because I was flying to Finland and we oh, missed wow. our flight. So we were in the airport hanging around. And by the time I landed in whatever that town we were in, I, I, it starts with an R. Uh, it, was, okay. it was a long word. Let's not try that, it. I couldn't pronounce it. Finish here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that word, that town. By the time we got there, the election was like, the, the polling was starting to, the numbers were starting to Wait, come so in. So you were like flying, you were in the air when the election was going on? Yeah, yeah, but it hadn't, wow. it wasn't over. So by the time I got to my, I'm watching the BBC, by the time I get to my room, I see that Trump hits 100 electoral votes before Hillary. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. Then I was sleep deprived. Because of the time change, we're eight hours ahead. It gets dark super quickly. I stayed up all night. Oh I never went to sleep. So when I get to the date, I'm like trying to talk to everybody. Like, can you believe it? Trump is the president. Can you believe it? And they're like, let's just stay away from that. Don't talk to Nick about that. Oh God. That's yeah. what they kept telling me. So no. did you guys talk about it? I I think we said one thing, like Trump's president. 
I uh, needed to know what he was thinking. When we were, <laughs> yeah, of when, course. When, well, it's interesting because I'm like, Rachel and I haven't talked too much about this. It's funny that they said that to you, but like with me, like maybe it's because I, you know, as the bachelor, you have like, they're not as worried. I don't know. So like, I was fully aware that everyone was fucking depressed. <laughs> yeah. And, interesting. And so I had the morning to talk about it and I could feel it. I mean, I could just feel it with everyone. It was like everyone's mom died. And I remember like we do, you do your intro, right? Every date, there's always like, you're going to see Rachel around the corner and you guys are going to walk <laughs> up and, and we did our like kiss. And then I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think I said that to you. Like I acknowledge, I think that after we did like the show, our uh, show obligation, I immediately resorted back to like, human and i did i definitely acknowledged it and i think i remember just like i was like are you okay i'm i'm sorry like, that's interesting because i didn't know i could talk about it because i they mm. were like kind of like you know i was saying oh my god oh my god oh my god and they were like no rachel you can't talk about it just focus on your day you're finally here it's fantasy sweet weeks and i really think though that they were also trying to get me to more open up with my emotions sure. and the election was distracting to me so they wanted me to focus on this is fantasy suites. You know, you had Adam running around the airport trying to find a Victoria's Secret for you. This is true. So <laughs> it was. Wait, what? What, what, what? My producer was Adam. They call him Banana. And when we were in New York, I was like, well, I got to. I got to make this happen. I was like, I'd like to be Mrs. Claus in the fantasy suites. <laughs> so he's running around trying to help me find red lingerie. But we all know that it was never seen. Right. All that work. I brought like a real well, fox I, hat. Like I ha I was ready had, to go. You had the, I saw the lingerie. That was black. That I was, had okay. red. Oh, you had other stuff. I had red. I was ready to go. You were going to change halfway through? That was not supposed to be seen. I wasn't like supposed to wear that. That was what I got drunk and okay. fell asleep All right. <laughs> So, okay, I have, I have so many questions. First of all, you might not be comfortable answering this, but okay. did you get to vote in 2016? I was just having this conversation. I, I, I'll i say I didn't vote. Yeah, um, you were the fucking bachelor. I'm sure they didn't make it easy for you. And and I'll be like, listen, I, 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 I at the time, I, I use it as an excuse because I wasn't really thrilled at the time with mm -hmm. either option. Mm -hmm. And I was just more or less a spectator. And since I was the bachelor and I was in Finland, I just kind of used that as an excuse not to participate. And then I was like, well, I'm also a resident of California, you know, whatever. True. So I did not vote. So I've never talked to, I was literally just saying, I was like, Nick, I've never told anybody this. <laughs> I was very pro Hillary, but my mom did not bring my absentee ballot to the hometown because oh, wow. that was my only option opportunity to vote. I mean, we leave September. I had already requested it. She didn't get it from my mailbox to bring it. So I couldn't vote. That sucks. Yeah. That really no, sucks. It does sucks. Especially seeing how things went down. And I remember thinking, oh, it's, it's, well, I mean, I was in Texas. So I was like, my vote doesn't really matter. But seeing how the election played out, it's like, how many more people were like me? I think right. the statistics say there were a hundred million people who did not vote right. in that election. And I, we that's chi were that's chilling. Them. Two, of, we them. Were two, two of, them. of them. That's chilling. Well, Nick, you were then shortly thereafter. I I I know that you were um, photographed at the Women's March in January 2017. I remember seeing the. I pics. was, yeah. So you joined the cause quickly thereafter. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't I'm not going to get into my whole politics of it all, <laughs> <Sure>. but <laughs> it's uh, it's four years later. Four uh, years later. God, I ca I can't believe it. Okay, so Rachel, were you allowed to watch? TV on the plane to keep up with like what was happening on the way to Finland. I don't know about you, Nick, but I was riding a janky plane. Okay. I was <laughs> yeah. not yet in first class. I was not the lead. This, the plane looked like it was out of the seventies. I think the seats were like yellow or orange, oh, maybe God. both. Well, there was yeah. no TV. Well, there's that. Well, when you asked that question, I was like, there, there wasn't TV on these flights <laughs> as the lead. You do get to fly first class, but the, it was first class from New York to Finland, mm -hmm. but or and by Finland I mean I excuse me I mean um, Helsinki yeah right and then we were in Lapland which is northern Finland so we had you take a, you took a much smaller plane so no one was in there was no first class in that plane 
One time yeah. I, I flew to Kiev and it was like the worst flight I've ever, I've ever had, like ever. And then I, this is just a total random tidbit, but then I landed in Kiev and I was like so excited. I was like, there's going to be great weird snacks. I can't wait to find out what the Soviet chips are like and Soviet candy. And I'm like, so I was like so excited. And then I get there and there's nothing but like a smoking section and like Diet Coke, no snacks at all. <laughs> and I was so, I'm still not over it. It was like eight years ago. I was like, I just want to fucking try some Russian chips. Is that too much to ask for? Like what are the weird flavors? Ketchup chips, whatever. They yeah. didn't have any of that. I <laughs> wish I could tell you it was, it was exciting. We spent eight hours in the Helsinki key airport because we missed our flight that's um, crazy yeah did no. you miss it because you were late what happened there i can't I, I guess so i honestly can't remember and there was one flight that was going to the lapland area a day so we even though we made it in new york we missed the one in helsinki to the lapland area yeah my god do you think that matt they're helping matt vote he's i mean he could be a resident of north carolina could be a resident I, of new I, york who knows I, I, i'll say this much I feel like if I would have made it a priority, they would have accommodated that for me. Mm. Uh, I as the lead, probably, yeah. yeah. As a contestant, no. Nah. As a contestant, they might not have. Yeah. Nah. Interesting. Well, maybe some of the women already got but Matt, that they could vote. Matt should have a better chance to be, like, even when Matt started in October, they could well, have they, they could have requested his absentee ballot yeah. for him in time. That's so true. So hopefully, and like, there's no excuses of, for him. New York? We, or we don't know. New York. I think New, New York. York. There are no excuses for Matt. He should be able to get it done. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so then, okay, so you then you find out who wins and then like Nick as the lead, you said that you could feel it. Like, what does that mean? Like, and, and what is it like when there's a vibe behind the scenes of the production? Like, uh, and you that, think- no, I've never, and, and you know, everyone knows I've been on the show a couple times. <laughs> like, I if had- they ne- did, If they didn't know from the best seasons ever, it yeah. was very clear. They're like, Four times, Nick Vial. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's just you like it's funny. Yeah. They didn't do that with Claire. I mean, they've talked about her age a lot, but they weren't like Claire, formerly engaged from Winter Games on Paradise twice on Juan Pablo season here for the fifth time. Like, they haven't done that to her. They've they've only made her seem no. Old. Like listen, whenever they have whatever storyline they land on, they don't know how to break from it. That's right. just, you've seen it on every season. But that being said. I had never experienced that with the cast. Like I had never, and you know, it's what's weird is cause like we were outside, you know, I just, and you felt like an energy as if, if everyone was locked in a room, mm. you just, everyone was just moving slower. That's true. There were people, I saw people <laughs> crying. Yeah, no, this is real. <laughs> you know, like it just was a eerie doomsday-ish feeling. And you know, the people, you know, who work on that show, are all, you know, they're, I, I, I didn't know, we don't talk about politics, but it turns sure. out everyone is very democratic and liberal, uh, which I wasn't surprised, but you felt it there. You know, I'll tell funny. you one thing, the Finnish people were laughing at us. Oh my God. I remember like we were a joke to them. I remember so when I got kicked off and I was in, we were in the capital of Lapland. They said to me, oh, you're American. Oh, <laughs> Trump. They said, you know, we have great seasonal jobs here. That's what- <laughs> They really? They, yes, I swear. They were, the uh. world, that's how I felt. The world was laughing at us. And we could truly feel that because we weren't in America. Right, right. That's like, yeah, that's there, during the Bush years when you'd leave the country, sometimes people would comment because there was, you know, it just was a very political time back then as well. That's really interesting. And so then, um, Rachel, you famously fell asleep from being drunk in the fantasy suite. We all we all know a lot about that. Um, when there weren't cameras around, did you feel like you could talk about it? If I had not been drunk, I know I would have brought it up because right. I talked politics in my own fantasy suite. So I need to know where you were thinking. So I needed to know what Nick was thinking. If Nick had said the wrong thing, we again would not have had a fantasy suite for right. other reasons. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but it was pretty much, yeah. I, mean, I think we had 10 minutes of conversation. So I'm told. I don't remember. <laughs> That's really funny. I don't remember thinking you seemed to seem drunk on TV. If you watch it back. If you look back, at my eyes. If you watch it back the next morning, she's she's clearly sick. I couldn't eat. He was making this fantastic breakfast. I was so hungry, but the smell of it was making me nauseous. I mean, I was, I was really drunk. And for various <laughs> reasons. I was nervous. 
I had hyped up Fantasy Suite to all the women in the house. Of right? Course. Like big time. I was like, you guys, this is how I keep getting roses. Like I would twerk in the house. And I was like, this is what I do with Nick when we're when we're talking one-on-one. I would mess with all of them. And you know, some would laugh, some would not. We know who I'm talking about. Sure. Vanessa, Vanessa, laughing. Vanessa didn't laugh. <laughs> didn't laugh. She thought I was serious. I think she thought I was serious. But I had hyped it up so much. I was honestly nervous to be one-on-one with him without cameras. And then the election. And then they kept talking to me about my feelings that I was like, I'm just going to drink it away. I, I drank so well, much. Well, because in, we also sometimes, like, we, we all hung out a little bit. Afterwards, you know? oh yeah, so, and that we doesn't partying. always happen, as you probably now realize. Um, <laughs> so now I know why we were doing that. See, okay, and I've never. T- we're gonna have a conversation that we've never had before. <laughs> yeah, so, let's so do it. I'm, I'm here to mediate. <laughs> <laughs> so now, at the time, I remember they're like, "Okay, that's a wrap," and everybody stayed and they ordered pizza. And we were dancing and they were playing music and, and all this it was stuff. A party. It was fun. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the party. Everybody loves us. We're having such a good time. Okay. Now fast forward to my fantasy suites. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying, hey, can you guys just stay around a little longer? Because I don't want this to be like super romantic. I want it to be more friendly. Oh, wow. Now I realize what was happening <laughs> back in Nick's fantasy suite. I was trying to like uh, make it go down. And Nick was like, hey guys, stay as long as you can. Right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I mean, like, wow. I, I don't need to say this, but like everyone, like at that point, I was like, I want I was gonna pick Vanessa. Yeah, and right. and, and yeah. it was more of about trying to make that work and had nothing to do with a lack of interest. I, I get yeah. it, but it's funny because I I've never talked to you about that. Yeah. And like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I was friend zoned in the fantasy suite. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't as much friend zone. It was just I'll never and I we joked about it. And I think I've said this before, but like so they do leave. I mean, eventually you have to have a fantasy suite. You know, you can't sure. party all night. And so Rachel puts on the, her black lingerie and she comes out and, <laughs> and I was. I was just like, how am I going to, like, oh, I'm so intimidated right now. Like, what? A, and then keep in mind, as The Bachelor, you can't, you know, or it was The Bachelorette. Like, sure. I don't know how we're, we're, I don't know if this is easier as The Bachelorette. I'm actually curious. But, you know, with the way society is, the general thought is, is if the girl's down, the guy's always down. Right. right. That, I think that is so, the way that society and, thinks. And in Bachelor World, like everyone's all horned up and <laughs> I think everyone goes in and it's like, I'm gonna fuck him, you know, like or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if girls actually say that, but like the, the fears of Bachelor is how do I, if I'm gonna choose not to be intimate with any of these women, how do I get through the night and have them think there's still a shot? Right. You know? I, and I made it easy for and, him. And you so, have to be delusional to think that, in my opinion, because I mean, well, isn't like isn't the whole thing constructed so that you just like it's like all this pent up sexual energy, and then like you're just given the opportunity to explore it, and if you don't, it's like what's wrong here? Sure, but again, Rachel did make it. E- I got so sure. lucky with Rachel <laughs> because she got sauced, and she came out in this lingerie. And my plan was, and I've said this before, that I and I tried it with Raven, and I got a similar but different response. Rachel just laughed at me because I said to her, I said to her, listen, before we get started, I'm not having sex with any of the women. Like I've been sexualized on this show. Like I don't need to have sex with anyone to know who I want to pick. And I don't know who I'm going to pick yet. And I'm just, I just, I'm not going to have a convert. And I, and I said, like, if I have sex with one of you, I'm going to have sex with all of you. And I don't (laughs) want to like get engaged and tell someone I've had sex with two other women. So I'm just not going to do this. And Rachel laughs in my face. (laughs) She's like, we're doing this. (laughs) And I respected it so much. It was so turned on at the same time, but also trying not to have sex because I was like, there's no way Vanessa, but Vanessa would have no. broken up with me immediately. She yeah. would not have accepted that on. Uh, yeah. No, and she would have, we wouldn't even gotten through the happy couple weekend. 
But then so rich, and I was like, Rachel, I was like, I was like, well, do you want a massage? And she's like, yes. And then like five seconds later, she starts snoring. Oh my God. <laughs> and didn't wake up till the next and morning. And I carried her up to the bedroom, got her uh, a couple uh, Advil and some water. And I That's said, nice here, this guy. Right. drink really this, nice take this, and you'll feel better in the morning. And the rest is history. And then, well, then we, yeah, then we, you know, slept. <laughs> slightly creepy question. Very creepy, whatever. Do the producers know, like, you know, mid in the middle of the night, like if there's coitus or not, or do they find out the next morning what's happened between you two? I am don't believe there's mics in there. No. But, but like you didn't tell them or you weren't like bored. No, they or definitely like, hey. ask the next no, day. Like, I know, not the next day, but like Rachel goes to sleep early. Like, what do you do all night? Just like hang out, read? It was late. Like, I went to bed. It was, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, these we, dates are- We had like, a great night. sleep. It's two in the morning. <laughs> like, even I like, see. yeah, it's, it's already like- the dates don't end to at least 11 or 12, sometimes two or three. It just depends on what you're doing. Well, ours later because we had the crew partying with yeah. us unbeknownst to me for right. on purpose. But I will say that one, everybody knew that we didn't because I'm running around saying, well, I'm going home because I'm the, the one who passed out in fantasy suites. Like this was my chance to make my mm -hmm. mark and I failed. But the producers are close to us. Like whoever was our was the producer that stayed with us, they stay like we were in a house, so they stayed downstairs. Yeah, in a there's room. a they, so, they give you like a cell. I think it's wild. They're like they yeah, know they're up. just like hey, you know you don't. They let you know that you're not alone. There's like That's if there's nice. an emergency, if you need us, if there's something happens. Yeah, they. You know, because the truth is, you're, you're essentially a couple of strangers spending yeah. the night. Yeah. And uh, yeah, also and you could get you know, uncomfortable. Anything could happen. That's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Did any of the other women bring it up the election? Um, Vanessa was pretty upset. She was definitely well. She's uh, lucky. She can go to Canada. Right. She's not even affected. I she like, was like, I like she, to hear that. She though. was in New York when it happened, hmm. and she mentioned that she like. She, I think she well, she cries about a lot of stuff, but she cried. Um, and, and she, it was interesting, honestly though, but she, she was in Times Square and oh, so that, that was a fascinating place to be, I'm sure. And it, I heard her point of view and it was, it sounded as surreal as you would expect. Wow. So everyone stayed in New York as like until they had to Well, yeah, to because the, the rose ceremony was in I New remember. York. Yeah. Andy came and, back. And so the next day Raven and I flew there cause Raven was going to the first date. And then, and then you guys kind of got staggered. Yeah, uh, got Vanessa, it. Vanessa came last, so she was in New York for like a five or six days. That's lucky. What do you do in that in between time? Actually, um, it's a blast. Yeah, Adam and I went to a Giants game, and he was like, huh. "I'm so lucky that I got to be with you." People normally make me go shopping. I was like, "No, let's go to a Giants yeah. game." <laughs> yeah, like whatever, whatever city you're in, you get to like, you really, you get to have some fun because like you're by yourself, either with your producer, you're in a usually a cool city. You're not as known, so not they're not as worried about like you right. being spotted. Um, you know, you try to wear a hat and be somewhat discreet, but like we you won. pretty much go and have some fun. <laughs> we played basketball in Brooklyn and had like Todd took me to play basketball in Brooklyn and, and eat fried chicken. And I said, I'm gonna tell on you. How like could you fit every s single stereotype? <laughs> This is your Possibly. idea. <laughs> no, I had a blast in New York. That's why I was so excited to go to Finland. It was like, okay, I'm ready. You know, I've had fun. Let's go. Let's do this thing. But I you, probably know the fried chicken place you went to in Brooklyn because I've like been there in Williamsburg. Fried and, yeah. and pies yeah, or something like that. Yeah, it's a good place. Th I think it's called Thighs and Pies. Yeah, yeah, okay. There you go. It is a good place. The Williamsburg Hotel is nice too. I've been, yeah, well, we did stay at the Williamsburg Hotel. But we stayed right next to it because I've stayed <laughs> at the Williamsburg Hotel a few times since then. And... Mm -hmm. It's really very meta to like go back to the stairwell where I walked Corinne down. You know, like oh I never thought I'd be there again. And, and like I walked over and was like, oh, this is weird. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, so, it's so great. Like with a lot of TV shows, this is a very meta conversation. Hope you guys don't mind. With a lot of TV shows, it's like people just like kind of come and go. But the way The Bachelor has evolved, it's like you started out as like a fairly like two-dimensional television character. And then only after the show do you get to like grow into a full human, which is just not <laughs> the usual way it goes. But it, it, it's really true. Like it, it's just, it's interesting. And I feel like, and also like in the last four years, like so much has changed. In some ways, I think your season, Nick, was a little bit of a turning point of like just kind of the Bachelor Nation world. But, you know. I like to think so. 
I didn't watch before. So, so, like, so for, I, so for well. me, it, it definitely. I, I mean, I honestly, they, no, it definitely changed, I think, for a lot of re- like how characters are shown, their arc, you know, the Corins of the world. I don't think you have a Demi if you don't have a Corin. The diversity. Uh, the diversity. I mean, obviously with Rachel, you know, is, is a big deal. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> so. It is. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two-year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Um, do you guys want to talk about Claire and Tasha a little bit? Tasha's first episodes on Thursday. Um, I hear this episode's. So I thought the big episode was this last week that we just saw, but I uh-huh. hear this one yeah, is even be. like bigger. Interesting. I, uh, it's it's gotten to the point. We talked about this a little bit, um, Juliet, and then Rachel and I talked about us offline. Bachelor Nation needs to chill. I like. I get it. Like <laughs> I, I, I. Yeah. I f- I just feel for Claire. Yeah. Claire's Claire, right? And like, listen, you're entertained, so chill the fuck out. Like, just watch the entertaining TV. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why you just have to, like, lose your shit over, like, is Claire being her best self? Maybe not. But, like, also, just let her do her thing, you know? I don't sure. understand what the big deal is. Question for you guys. Many people in my life, particularly men, were, like, craziest episode ever about last week's with yeah. the Yosef fight. I keep saying Yosef. And like, that's because it's like the Israeli way of like saying Joseph. Um, but anyway, a lot of people are like craziest episode ever. Like bet one of the best. Like I've heard that a lot, especially for men. I'm curious if you guys think that like, where does this rank high as like a great episode for you? I will say yes, but also because I can't really remember <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you but don't have reason- a deep well to pull from mm-hmm. our library. <laughs> but the reason I say yes is because I had seen the episode you know, for podcasting. And then I watched it with a group of friends. And when I watched it back, there's so many elements to the last episode that you're like, it felt like a six hour episode and it was only two. It was the heaviest one I can remember. Like in terms of like feeling or just like a lot went on? Well, the issues. There's a lot went on, the issues, you know, what's going on, you know, as as people who, I don't know, I didn't listen to your your podcast with um, Mina. Love Mina. Uh, no, she's great. Yeah. And, you know, I, there were just a lot of like, what's going on here? Um, well, the Zach stuff. It was just like, for- you know, and then I talked to Claire. She called. That was. What'd she I'm say? Feel- I'm what can you tell us? Share- nothing. Oh, you did yeah. talk to Claire, though. Me. I like me. that. I, honestly, that, you know, I was just trying to make her feel better about her. What's going on? Well, That's my goal at this point. Um, okay. And I was just trying to offer some perspective to get her through this season. But um, she shares she shares some information that I'll let Claire share if she ever wants to someday. But it it definitely changed my point of view a little bit about the reaction. I don't know if they would have. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they should have or done anything differently in terms of how it was aired. But 
it just was a weird situation. Well, what, what what do you think people are like upset about or like what is she upset about? Because I'll just say as a as a viewer, the Zach stuff, I did not like how that was put into the show. I think Zach messed up. Zach had to go. He put her obviously in a very uncomfortable position and like he clearly had to go. I do not like that they had him stay to like go to the dinner for Chris Harrison to send him home and for them to like not even address like what had happened, like Claire does in her ITM or whatever, but, or in her, you know, interview with the camera and the producer. But I felt like that, like really sour me on the episode that like made it like, like the Yosef stuff, like was like funny and kind of fun. And like all the Dale stuff is like a lot to like dig into, but I just thought the Zach situation clouded so much of how I was well, just like you are. I mean, I that's, it. that's what I was referring to, but how, yeah. but, but, but how could it have been different? Yeah. That's the thing. Because the thing is, is, he didn't in that moment realize what he did. And I don't know if anyone ever told him. Yeah. And, and the reason I say that too is because he was on Twitter defending what he did. Oh, really? I didn't see yeah. that. Yeah. He was like going at it with reality, Steve. Oh, oh God. God. Yeah. Oh. And I, he was going Stay at off it. Twitter, man. That's he was, he messed was going up. at it with him. And so what I, was he I saying? don't. I, I didn't really, really go into it, but I okay. know that he was basically defending what he did, like saying he didn't. He wasn't aggressive. He said something like, I'm a 200 pound, this tall guy. If I really would have pulled her, she what? would have moved. <laughs> it was some fuck. Yeah. So this guy is an asshole. Yeah. And, and I think that that's why it played out the way it did because they did not tell him. And then I think from a legal perspective, there were some issues as to what could be shown, what couldn't, hmm. what, like, are they taking it too far? I, th- there were, a, there was a lot surrounding this. And I know that this, that's a reason that we all waited so long to get this episode to come out oh, to us because they were really trying to make sure that legally everything was okay. Interesting. It's, huh. se- it seemed like best case scenario, even after talking to Claire, that and that's where the, the the from a show standpoint, and I even hate to hear that he was on Twitter. I mean, that's insane. But like, it seemed like maybe there's a situation and there's a conversation around what he did might not be an issue with some people, right? But for her, for whatever reason, and she's spoken about her past, yeah, that it triggered her, and she had a reaction to it, which she has a right to have, right? Of course. And then in that atmosphere, the stakes are so high. Everything's confusing to every contestant. And and that's why I agree with Rachel's question is like, well, what's the solution? How could have it been handled better? I don't know. I don't have an answer with the information I have because it just seemed like, you know what? This has gotten uncomfortable. Let's just have him leave. And that's the way they handled it. And does it mean he, you know, again, the Twitter things, I don't know, but it does it mean I after Hearing from people involved in the situation, I didn't get the impression that he definitely did something, you know, like that you just don't do that, but he definitely did something that made her feel a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of like all that matters. I guess my thing is I'm just like, why did they have him dress for dinner? And like, clearly there was like many hours that passed and then film. Yeah, I guess that's weird that you point that out. I mean, (laughs) TV. TV. I I guess, but like they show people leaving like out of official sequence all the time. He could have knocked on their his door while he's getting ready. But that that it added to the dramatics. I mean, it was cold the way they did it. They sat him down. Yeah, had him wait there. I never (laughs) thought about that. Wow, it was that was fucking weird. Also, like I know this is usually really cheesy, and like I'd actually like I'm surprised I'm even going to throw this out there. But when television shows run like a screen of like you know giving you the phone number of like a suicide prevention hotline or like a number for like resources for, you know, if you have like an eating disorder, like what, whatever it is. I actually think that like, that's at least the, sh- even if it's like shallow and not enough, at least that's like a television program, like acknowledging you've just seen something that's wrong. And so like, maybe they could have it just acknowledged it with like some kind of screen. Like if you, if you need to report something like here's the number to do it. I don't, I don't know, but I yeah, just, I don't, I don't think that they whole can go weird. there. I think yeah. that was the issue. They and it, I say, yeah, and I'm, I don't have all the information. So I'm not totally even like, it's just, I wasn't there. And even after talking to someone who was, I didn't feel getting off the phone that all of a sudden, like I was like, this guy deserves to go down type of thing. That's not the, that's not how I heard it from that person, you know? 
I, on the other side. So, I, and, I, I, and I'm not if even you, saying if you, like if he needs if you to go put down that, or not. I know, but if you put that up, you get how people like look at how yeah. people are reacting to Claire for not doing anything wrong. Yeah, she's just dating. She's just like likes a guy, <laughs> and people are reacting like she's committing crimes. Well, it's you really can't weird. Please, well, you can't please these people. You're always wrong in whatever you do. The whole point of the show is to fall in love. I mean, my God, the first night they ask you, "Have you seen your husband or wife?" I mean, they push that on you. So the fact is, Claire actually said, "Yes, I have." His name is Dale, <laughs> yeah. and, and people are judging her. Yeah, for that. people are like, "Why?" Would you want to watch a season of? her go through 30 relationships where you clearly can tell she's not into them. It's it's kind of like, I think the show is doing right by bringing somebody else oh, in. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. And why also, are like, people mad about that? It's I, not I, I like they jilted, they gave you another bachelorette. Yeah. What's the problem I also, here? And I don't, but on the flip side, I don't get the conspiracies of being like, well, they always knew. So what if they did? Who cares? I, I, t- I, I totally agree with that. So what if they, so what if they did? I also like, don't think they did. Uh, and then the people are like, the exact timing wouldn't happen. I don't fucking know. Like Rob was on my podcast and he gave us a time. Maybe that's accurate. Maybe it's not. It doesn't fucking matter. Like right. at I some know. point, Claire was just like, it was clear, you know. I, I like, believe actually Rob's timeline based on, okay, so here's something. Ooh. I was supposed to be on Claire's season. Okay. So like, I feel like I can talk a little bit more about this now because- um, and Claire didn't even know that, by the way. I was like, Claire, I was coming on your season. <laughs> so I get a call that's like, actually, no, Claire won't be here when you get here. And when I look at the timing of everything, when I got that call, it's around the same time. And they were interested. They were saying that they were interested in bringing somebody. Nothing was finalized at that point. And I was even told who it was. So it does make sense. And they didn't start right away. It's not like, Taisha got there and they started immediately. There was time that passed in between. So yeah, she I had think quarantine. Yeah, like well, so it makes sense yeah. what Rob said about yeah, I mean, once we saw her and, give her the rose. Minus the rose. quarantine, because you know, that takes sometimes a different world. But like they can execute a contract, a psych test, and a medical test in 12 hours. Yeah. Like I got a call from a producer. Uh, to ask me if I was remotely interested in coming on Caitlyn's season. I had a job, a career, and in three days, I was in New York after, after having flown to LA to dick. Like, things can happen real fast. Yeah. It's They're very good at that. And, and she s- was already in California. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, she, she was, half, she was she halfway lives, to Palm Springs. She lives Springs. down the road. They're <laughs> like, <laughs> swing on by, pee in a cup. <laughs> and like, no one's doing anything, right? Like, you're yeah. just like, okay. Because it's like, you know, July, yeah. and you're just like, yeah, just doing nothing. But, but, but think, most importantly, to Rachel's point, who cares? Yeah. It doesn't I, that's, matter. That's, like, that's what I was going to no, say, too. Like, what's there to be mad about? Like, honestly, Claire is like a godsend right now. Like, this is like a batshit season that's really, like, silly. And she just, like, does very dramatic stuff. And, like, her just the, everything she does is dramatic. And she's, like, all in. Like, she obviously, is, like, go, plays along with the dates. Like, she's, like, really into, like, all of the conceits. Yeah. And it's like kind of a gift. Like, would you like would we want someone who's bad who's boring? I I love how crazy Claire is. And not kind of a gift. It's a total gift. We should just say thank you for being entertained. Yeah. And I think Taisha will look fantastic the first two episodes. And I don't know how the rest of the season will go. Yeah. You know, I I'm definitely ready for Taisha. It's been a lot, you know, it's been heavy, and I'm looking forward to seeing Taisha, but like. Come three episodes, it may not be as exciting. I don't know. I hope it is. But like, and either way, complain again. leave her alone. <laughs> yeah. People, <laughs> and if you I, want to critique and snark, I'm fine with that. I snark. But people are just like course. fucking mean. No, it's pretty awful. I got online just to see like Twitter, what people were saying after the third episode. I couldn't find one positive thing people were saying about Claire. That's why I got on my Instagram and I was like, get off Claire, like move on. People are being absolutely ridiculous right now. And I just feel for her. It's a lot. It's a lot, period. And you, whether you want to look at social media or not, you can't escape it. Yeah. In some form or fashion, it hits you. I also, like people lost their shit when they heard Claire say, like that she referred to Dale as her fiance. Oh yeah. And I'm here to say- Love that every, that. I, I'm here to say that every lead, either jokingly or seriously, has referred to their pick as their fiance. I didn't. At some, you know, 
You, I'm dead serious. Okay, I maybe. did it. But like, I guess what I'm saying is, lay off Claire because it's not a big. People are acting like it's a big deal. I actually thought it was a big deal. Why? <laughs> Why? What, because what I'm, just, I'm gathering is like Rachel really played by the rules when she was on these shows. Was I mean, so I played weird, by the rules, but I'm just like saying you do like, your own thing. here's why I don't think it's a big deal because she's just talking. And as you know, you talk and you film, you do ITMs and they chose to air that. And I get why, because okay. she was obsessed with Dale and they're providing context of just how much. Well, this is what I have a problem with. I actually have a problem with that they were showing all of that for Claire. And this is what I said. And I said this in my Instagram. I actually have an issue with production. I don't think it's fair. We have all at one point said to our producer, can we just hurry this along? Sure, yeah, that's, that's my point. That's that what I'm one, trying to say. Yeah. And you know. I thought it was so wrong to show that because we've all done that. You're tired. You're exhausted. Yes. You've talked to who you already want to talk to that night. Yeah. And you're like, or can you just hurry along so I can get to the one I want to talk to? That was so unfair for them to show that of her because- they never show that with anybody else. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Moreover, you don't actually physically see those words coming out of her mouth. So she could have said that at any time. Like you have no idea when she said that. Yeah. So who, yeah, who knows? but I guess what, and that's what I meant by, I didn't think it was a big deal for her to say the fiance thing because yeah. she was like clearly feeling him. I'm not saying I called Vanessa my fiance at any point. I don't remember mm. if I did, but I'm definitely like spoke about her to producers as my pick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and- I'm sure I said that mic'd at some point, you know, I just, and so that's my point. It's just like, uh, yes, I, I get what you're saying. I don't, I don't personally necessarily, I didn't think of it as a problem for them showing it. And the, that's the thing. It's just like, at, who, who are we blaming? Like, and I guess the show, like, what if people didn't react so insane to something that's not insane? You know what I'm saying? Like all they did was provide context and I don't have a problem with, Claire falling in love with Dale in episode three because they found a replacement and we'll move on. And it's because people react the way they do yeah. and then they go after her and lose their shit. And, you know, that's the thing. It's just like, I don't, why, where did we get to this point where like they take the show so literal? I don't know. It is kind of weird. It's like, can't we just have fun? I'm just here to have fun. I'm not yeah, here. Yeah. I think it's the, my issue with Bastard Nation is they think they know you because they've, they've um, developed this sense of like, I guess of who they think you are based on a character that they see. And if anything has shown us, the person you think they are, the person you want to praise can be a totally different person in the real world. And I think we know who I'm talking about yeah. when I refer to that. <laughs> it's okay? well, a lot of people. You want to praise and, and treat them like they're like a god. Who are you talking and about? And then Colton. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then this one. happens. Yeah. But like, yeah. Yeah, everyone's siloed. But, and that's the thing. It's just like, I get what you're saying, but I, it's interesting to hear you say that because I didn't, I wasn't like, I didn't have an issue with production at the time. I get what you're saying, but it was more like they almost needed to show that because we need to understand why Tasha's coming in and she's leaving. And that's well, because like, it. it's no, sure. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. I get what you're saying. But um, I get what you're, I get it. It fits into the storyline, but I think why I feel so bad for Claire is I remember talking to her before and I was like, Claire, they always make the lead look great. <laughs> Not They're not this really time. doing that with Claire, and I feel bad for her. <laughs> but isn't and it it's, weird that, like, after the whole raccoon situation and all of that, she keeps on coming back? Like, they have done her dirty before. Well, when you're the Bachelorette or the Bachelor, it's different. And and here's the thing. In production's defense— they're not lying in yeah. what they're showing. They're just showing more than they normally show for the lead because normally you're protected. You're it's also, not a lie I what mean, you're watching. You're exactly. you're assuming they're, you're showing more. There could be a lot more they're not showing. No, I as agree. Well. I agree with that. I'm and that's I've what heard I'm that too. So I agree with that. I'm just saying that you know there are things like. For example, her talking to Deanna and making it seem like she was talking to her for four hours while the guys were waiting. That's not how that actually played out. There was more in it. And Deanna shared it with us like when we were on extra. Like gotcha. Claire didn't want to do the group. Claire didn't want to do the group date. For, yeah. and, and not because yeah. of the men. It's not because of the men. It's because of the date. It's because of the type of date it was. Got it. What was the date? I don't know if I can if I'm able yeah. to share all that yeah. information. Okay. I've said too much. All right. <laughs> Um, now that I kind of think about it, I feel like you get a lot more Bachelorette talking to production than Bachelor. Like, Peter, can't remember him talking to production. You Colton, didn't see it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying on the yeah. show. Colton, yeah. we saw him run off, but, like, that was it. 
we like, you know, the fence, of course, like, but Rachel, obviously they showed you talking in production a lot. Like when they, you know, they tried, long, I wasn't allowed to watch the season. And the finale. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then I'd get emotional and they would yeah. use it like that, but I was really gotcha. talking to our producer. Gotcha. Yeah. And then Hannah, we saw it a lot and like a lot of her like getting flustered and we're seeing it a ton with Claire. I just feel like it's like a weird trying to like make the woman yeah. seem emotional. I never thought about that, but that's true. Uh, like, know. you know, Peter was losing his shit. You know it. Like he was obviously, we were seeing this man fall apart in front of our eyes and we did not see any of that. Peter fell in love on every date. Yeah. <laughs> every date. That is a fact. That's the thing. It was like, I, I think Peter was very much a rule follower and Peter was like, too good of a bachelor, which is why he was bad because like yeah, you're not supposed point. to fall in love with, that's just crazy. And he was just like, well, I'm the bachelor and every date's a new experience and a new chance to find love. And that's what he did. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's what they want. Yeah, and, and that's then what, this they is what happens. And everyone's like, whoa, that's too much. Calm down. <laughs> Very pure. Oh, Peter, him yeah. and Kelly seem happy. I'm yeah, happy they do. Them. They're cute together. I think they're, yeah, I, I feel like that's going to work out. I do too. Be, that's great. You know, I, I love love. I want everyone to find love. Hope, Aww, hope it's out that's there. That's why you're a fan I, of the show. And, and, and I hope, <laughs> and I hope that Claire and Dale are still together, assuming they are together. Oh, uh, rumors they're married. Great. And as if they are, and I, because general, like, you know, Peter has his critics and whatever, but like people love love. You know, yes, people, I love love. if you can prove that you're, look at Ari and Lauren, people come around. Yeah. Uh, Jason and Molly, even Rachel and Brian at first were like, oh, why don't you pick Peter? And now this it's like, yeah, true. Rachel and Brian, you know, like if they, if they can make it work, it'll work out for Claire. Yeah. Especially if, you know, depending on what happens with Tasha, if Claire ends up finding, the only relationship out of that season, she that's it'll, the rumor as well. That oh, will. Oh, I, I'm I'm totally spoiler free, so please don't. I haven't heard anything, but I didn't know that about Tasha. Let, Interesting. But let's, so let's consider that Tasha goes through the season. Now, granted, Tasha's at a disadvantage having a shorter time, but she goes in. She's just like, eh, I don't, I'm not really into this guy. And America loves these guys. Let's assume. I don't know. They do. They do. I like they, it seems like yeah, yeah, right. And Bennett, Tasha, call me. And and uh, I like I love Bennett. And and all of a sudden, come the, despite all this crap that we're seeing now, if Claire and Dale are happy in six or twelve months, people are gonna be like, "All right, well, you're in love." <laughs> That's how nuts they are. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, and I, I love you, Bachelor Nation, but like, chill the fuck out and stop bullying <laughs> yeah. Claire. Nick, you've been very on message. I feel like you you're like, chill the fuck out. We got to get on a mug for you for when you're drinking on your show. You know, well, it's <laughs> just like. I, it's a lot this season. Because it's like, you want to have fun. It's fun to live tweet. It's fun to tell jokes. And, it, you know, I've had plenty of people talk shit about me. And it's like, but it gets to the point where it's gotten mean. Yeah. You know, know. like it's one know. thing to like tell your joke. Ha ha ha. All right. That's a good one. All right. I see that. But now it's just like people are going after these, yeah. some of these people. And it's just like, it's not okay. Well, Claire's got Dale, and he'll he'll make it okay for her. They'll get through it together. Hopefully, it's a partnership. I'm rooting for Claire and Dale Absolutely. now more than ever because he seems like a nice, sweet guy, pretty genuine. He won some points for me during the, not the last episode, the roast. That took a lot for the guys to come at him. And what he, was he supposed to do? He could have handled it more poorly. He smiled awkwardly <laughs> and because he there. was like, guys, you can roast all you want. I got this in the bag. Do you guys think this? Thing I'm pretty sure a lot of guys throughout the season in that situation could have and would have handled it differently. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. It's not easy say. to have a bunch of guys in, in that room just come at you and tell jokes and feel the wrath. It's not easy. That's true. Uh, I thought I thought a lot of the jokes were bad. I don't like roasts. Roasts like make me un uncomfortable. It's not not content or experience I'm looking for. Like I don't want to roast anyone. I don't want to be roasted. Like I just, I just I don't like that kind of thing. I also don't like pranks. Like, I just, I don't like that. The gray area of humor. <laughs> they're they're good when they're funny, but you're right. They weren't jokes. No, they were just were like, funny. I hate Claire's you, Dale. Claire's jokes are funny. Claire had the best jokes. Yeah, I hers were good. I, I heard a, a joke of Claire's that didn't make air, and that was, and it was hysterical, is Chris Harrison's job is so easy, even Chris Harrison can do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Zing. Zing. Oh, wow. Zing. That was real good. I feel, and I love Chris, but I feel like Chris was like, yeah, that's not going to make the cut. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, thanks. thanks that was no a thanks. good one. Uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, 
Rachel and Nick, thank you so much for joining me for the selection special and for spilling some tea. I always love that. Thank you. I'll be back Thursday evening. Lauren Zima, she's next up for Tasha's first episode. Very excited. Finally, Tasha will get to speak, not just be a lady of the pool. Um, she's podcasting. She, is he not talking about? That's true. She's, she's talking about pop. pop. She's not, she's not <laughs> clickbait. Clickbait, pop culture. Um, with Hannah, Ann, and Joe. I don't know. No free ads. I don't know why we're promoting this show. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter. Be kind to yourself. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>